conservative host Tucker Carlson put former Vice President Mike Pence on the hot seat on Friday. Speaking at the Family Leadership Summit in Iowa, Carlson clashed with the presidential hopeful over Ukraine. Let's watch. I'm sorry, Mr. Vice President, have you, I know you're running for president. You are, you. You are you distressed notice. that the Ukrainians don't have enough American tanks. Every city in the United States has become much worse over the past three years. Yeah. Drive around. There's not one city that's gotten better in the United States. Right. And it's visible. Our economy has degraded. The suicide rate has jumped. Public filth and disorder and crime have exponentially increased. Right. And yet... Your concern is that the Ukrainians, a country most people can't find on a map, who've received tens of billions of U.S. tax dollars, don't have enough tanks. Right. I think it's a fair question to ask, like, where's the concern for the United States in that? Well, it's not my concern. <laughs> Tucker, I've heard that routine from you before, but that's not my concern. Pence, who visited Ukraine in June and met with President Zelensky, has supported U.S. aid to the war-torn country all along and told Tucker Carlson that he would restore uh, the U.S.'s role as the, quote, leader of the free world. And uh, to be fair to him, because it does cut yeah, off there, he does say, go on to say that he, he, he supports can walk doing and talk both. At the same time. Yes, he does exactly. not say, like, oh, you know, screw all U.S. cities, see, uh, US cities we just got to keep funding Ukraine. Right. He says both should be done. But, uh, but the reality is that it, it is a matter of priorities and for which, uh, on a bipartisan basis, uh, very much led by uh, uh, Joe Biden and the mainstream of the Democratic Party, with m significant agreement from Republican, some Republican leaders like Mitch McConnell and intellectual leaders within the party vying for its nomination, like Mike Pence, uh, take a, take a position that Ukraine needs as much Unlimited funding for as long as it takes. Even now we're sending cluster bombs, the, these these horrible right. weapons of war that many other countries think are uh, I inappropriate to use at all for because of the uh, potential for civilian deaths, um, women and children years down the line. Uh, it is a matter of priorities what we fund, and the frustration that so many people on all sides of the political aisle feel that Ukraine get that we, we, we gave them extra money. We can't even count all right. the money we're giving them at a time when look. I, I, I take Tucker's point. I just visited Memphis for this uh, for this conference. I've never been there before. I, I feel like I've been traveling for a lot of conferences, and every time I visit a new city. I do have there's there is a there's a kind of decay. There's a kind of there's there's a lot of homelessness. There's a lot of um, decline. Obviously, it's pandemic related. I'm not you know I'm not saying this was all on our policy makers, but how we fix it is a policy choice. So I do think that budgets are policy choices. They're policy documents that demonstrate one's priorities. I also do not think it's a zero sum game between military spending and domestic spending. I think that military spending should be cut because our military does horrible things. But I also it's, I have to point out that Biden did pass an enormous infrastructure bill in 2021 that was supposed to be this part bipartisan infrastructure bill that 19 Republicans voted for. 19 Republicans voted for it. So it does, I think, ring hollow to those of us on the left who hear Republicans making the But they're happy to attend point. the ribbon-cutting ceremonies when yes. those dollars are yes. spent. Yes, it's, it's, I mean, it's hilarious. Sure. And Biden, to his credit, had some good one-liners about how many Republicans are scrambling to celebrate his funding achievement that he did in spite of the you know domestic leaders at the you know the regional leader the senator or representatives uh, opposition to it. That being said, you know I, I, I appreciate the rhetorical move that's being made here, drawing this contrast between how things are going at home and how things are going abroad. And I, I have no interest in derailing that rhetorical sleight of hand because it's useful. And I, my project is also cutting um, foreign uh, spending, uh, military spending. But I, I just ur would urge vo voters to be wary of political actors who simultaneously, in the Republican Party especially, are also angling to cut the social services that also have a huge impact on how these cities are faring. There's a direct relationship that's been proven over time between bringing poverty rates down, having more affordable housing. You want to talk about a homelessness issue, we have to look at the fact that housing, the cost of uh, homes has risen, what is it, 500 percent in the last 20 years. We have to look at the fact that there isn't a single city in the United States of America where if you work a full-time, 40-hour week, minimum wage salary, you can afford a one-bedroom apartment. 
It's not a, we, do, we have a housing crisis crises in places like California, not because liberals are magically hypocritical and ill, be, be, um, bad spirited, but because those are very expensive places to live because they're huge thriving economies with a lot of rich people living there. And that's not to let the liberals there off the hook, but you have to have housing policy that actually engages with that, and not just hand ring wildly hand wave wildly at the idea that somehow the money that's going to a tank in Ukraine would otherwise have been spent on affordable housing for people in San Francisco. Well, this issue uh, came up uh, in this recent um, viral video clip that uh, I thought <laughs> audiences would want to see. So on Friday, the House nearly passed the fiscal 2024 defense authorization, lawmakers voting uh, uh, 219 to 210 for the NDA, but not before provisions that would have allowed the military to pay for travel associated with abortions for service members was stripped out. Now, in a hearing last week that took place before the vote, Congresswoman Summer Lee pressed a witness over funds spent on Viagra. Let's watch. How much on average does the military spend on Viagra each year? I don't have that figure. Man. About 41.6 million. Do you know how many bridges in my district of Pittsburgh could be repaired with that amount? About two. The rebuilding of the Fern Hollow Bridge, which of course uh, collapsed the day that President Biden happened to be coming to Pittsburgh, uh, cost about $25.3 million to rebuild. So, so I had a couple of reactions. First of all, when she, I was kind of sad when she said that would only fix two, two bridges. It cost that much money. Yeah, but I mean... I think that's pretty remarkable. Pitt Pittsburgh, you know, it's not some random town in the middle of nowhere USA. It was a once a thriving industrial center. Mm -hmm. And if you think as little of Viagra and its public health benefit as so many conservatives have thought of various aspects of women's reproductive health over the years as they try to cut and deny people access to those things, then you have a good argument for how those are federal dollars not being well spent. I mean, she's raising a fundamental core hypocrisy. This is something that conservatives have done to their political benefit for a long time, which is try to find line items and bills that to the ear sound absurd and like not what their personal spending priorities are to undermine the broader public funding efforts of people on the other side of the aisle. And here Summer Lee is doing the same thing, taking a obviously non-essential health product. I, I, look, I'm happy for men to have access to Viagra. I'm, I'm frankly happy for the government to pay about it, pay for it, but not at the same time that they're trying to uh, strip essential services from other members of our American community, or at the same time that they are voting against infrastructure bills, the likes of which Biden passed back in 2001, which would fund the bridges in Pittsburgh without stripping men of Viagra. Sure. I also assume the reason it's that much money, right, is because of our very broken health care insurance system where the price of drugs can't be negotiated. So whoever makes Viagra can say, oh, it costs a zillion dollars, and that's not being paid directly. It's being paid by the insurance company, and they pay them and say, so sure, it's a zillion dollars. And then, you know, that's paid for through taxes. Uh, I Googled it really quickly. Uh, apparently, you can expect to pay 65 to $140 per tablet of brand name Viagra and 4 to 10 per tablet of sildenafil, uh, I guess an off-brand version of it. And depending on your insurance provider, some of that cost might be covered. So I do think, I mean, that is not a, that's not cheap, but I also think that part of that high price tag is just how prevalent it is and how popular the drug is. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's neither here nor there. But I, I think that was a point well made, and I think that some really is being an effective legislator here. It's worth noting that Summer Lee was one of the progressives that was targeted by um, those APAC groups that were targeting progressives that had kind of some pro-Palestinian um, generalized, you know, don't kick people off their land and shoot people with impunity kinds of uh, approaches to the region. Um, and she was one of the few that survived the challenge uh, narrowly by the skin of her teeth. So from a progressive perspective, it's nice to see her doing something with that platform. Mm. We'll have more rising right after this.